Hey, that's not true. I know, I know what you're doing there. Get out. Go out of my video now. Bet. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, good day. My name is Ines Even Swalese, and you are welcome back to my channel. Yeah, it's been a while, I know, but we have been busy, we have been working, we have been doing lots and lots of things. Thank you all so, so much for your patronage, and thank you all so much for taking our courses. In fact, as a matter of fact, I'm very much grateful for this. So, if this is your first time of dropping by or even stopping by do all to hit the notification bell and the subscribe button so that you get to see more videos like this anytime i post <laughs> yeah guys in today's video i'm going to be telling you guys how to accurately use whitening actives in case you don't know there are lots and lots of whitening actives right there in the market in fact when you go to your supplier and then you ask them for a whitening active, what they do is they bring kojic acid, they bring, you know, so many types of whitening actives or ingredients. That's true, yeah, it's very nice. But the truth of the matter is how can you use this actives? How do you use them? I said a whole lot of people just pouring it inside their products and they claim that it works very well well if you check my other video it's right there the link is right there below the description box yeah it is right there click on it and see the different types or the best whitening actives to use in your product now how do you bring this whitening actives together and then use them when do you use them in your formulas or in your formulation how do you go about them that is exactly what I'm going to be taking you guys on today. The first ingredient is a very nice active and it is called azelic acid. Now, with the name azelic acid, you should know that this is an acid. So this simply means that you can't use it in a soap or you can't use it in a product that has a very, very high alkaline structure. It, baffles me that a whole lot of people use azelic acid at a higher 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 percentage the truth of the matter is because of its anti-inflammatory purposes or properties this particular ingredient is so good it is the holy grail for peoples yeah, I got that right. Yeah, it's the holy grail for pimples and also any, you know, um, swellings on your skin. It prevents acne from happening or occurring and it also helps your skin to get rid of them. All right, so azelic acid is not an AHA. It is not an alpha hydroxy acid. It is a beta hydroxy acid, which is a BHA. Okay, so azelic acid is very, very good for acne. But the best way to use it is at a percentage of 0.5 to 3%. Don't go above this, all right? If you're going above this, then it simply means that your dermatologist has actually prescribed it. But because you're seeing it online, so many DIYers. DIYers, is that correct? <laughs> So many DIYs or wires, whatever. Some YouTubers are always saying, add azelic acid at a percentage of 10 and then see maximum result. The little thing about this particular information is that azelic acid is quite drying. Even at a percentage of three, it is still very much drying. So it helps to prevent. But if you wanna use 10%, then that's still very much fine. You can try it out and see how best it comes for you. Well, this is not a new information to our students, especially if you took the emotion potency course. It is not a new information. As a matter of fact, I know very well that you're going to learn how to make or use this ingredient with the SSP method. So the truth of the matter is SSP, hill, 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 hill. Let me hear you guys. Right, I hear you. Thank you all so much. And that is it for azelic acid. Do not use at a way higher percentage. Just wouldn't do well. 
Now, we have another one known as salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is also um, a sister or a brother to azelaic acid. It's just that azelaic acid performs best at a pH lower than 6. So if you have a product and then you want to use azelaic acid, please do, but let, make sure the pH is lower than six. That way it is bioavailable in that formula, okay? But if the pH is higher than six, then it means it's not bioavailable. That means it's no longer gonna be working in that product anymore. And then when do you add azelaic acid? You need to make sure that you're adding it or you're dissolving it at a um, melting point or at its melting point where you know very well that this is going to dissolve so the first thing you need to do is you need to check go online make research see how to dissolve it or what it dissolves in okay when you have done that it's it's very much easy for you to incorporate that in your product okay now the best way that I like to use azelaic acid or even salicylic acid is to dissolve it first you need to dissolve it first. Stop putting the raw powders inside your cream. Maybe after you've made your cream and then you just want to, you know, add azelaic acid because somebody said it's very good. No, don't do that. You need to understand how to use this actors or else they would do the reverse on your skin and then you would not like it. That's it. So it's same with salicylic acid. The only difference with salicylic acid is that salicylic acid performs best in a higher pH. That you didn't know that, right? Now, we have done so many experiments with salicylic acid and I often find out that salicylic acid does not really do well with um, lower pH because when I tried using it at a pH around three, man, it came so 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 bad on my skin my skin was really 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 off the hook off the chat i just was not feeling myself so it's best you can use this simply means that salicylic acid can be used in a soap it works and it performs best at a higher ph level and you need to be careful don't go above two percent for salicylic acid because salicylic acid will dry out your skin and then you definitely would not like it. Now, another one is sepi white. Sepi white as we know it could be water soluble or even oil soluble, depends. I made a video one time and I was talking about sepi white that you need to dissolve it in your oil phase and then somebody said, no, it's water soluble. Depending on your supplier, sepi white can be water soluble or even oil soluble. The oil and water soluble sepi white is very much possible and you can use <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> and you can use that anytime. So I like to get sepi white from a known source. Well, he's based in Nigeria and um, there's no website, but he buys, he buys the product. He buys the actives at, from a very, very trusted supplier. I'm going to leave his number below. If you're in Nigeria, you can call him, send him, or to, for him to send you the actives. Well, the truth of the matter is sepi white should be used at a pH of 3 to 6. So I like to use it at a pH of 4 to 5 or 4.5. It's very much good. And the way I use sepi white or how I incorporate it in my product is I like to dissolve it in oil before I put it in my product. So say, for example, I am using, um, um, I'm making a product, I like to add it at the end of the formula. I don't like to add it when the heat is still very much intense. So I like to add it at the cool down phase. I just dissolve it in oil and then I still pour it inside my formula. This is how I use sepi white. Then the other one is sim white. Sim white is very, very, very super hypersensitive. You don't use sim white anyhow. You don't even put it to your water phase or you don't put it to your oil phase in your formula because of the heat. It is very, 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 very unstable to heat and you need to understand this very very well so what i do is i always like to dissolve my sim white inside propylene glycol and then add to the cool down phase this way 
it becomes very good it becomes stable and i like to use it at a ph range of 3.5 this is the best range for seam white and this is the truth i'm telling you guys right now another one is kojic acid depalmated and i'm going to stop here if you want some other um if you want me to make another video concerning how i use other types of actors but these are the, like the core ones i have gotten lots of questions on then please drop down your comments and i will be reading them and i'll be with you in no time all right so kojic acid depalmitate is very good it is very stable and i like to use kojic acid depalmitate that's the stable form of kojic acid i like to use it at a ph of five i don't like to go above that but this simply means you can use it in your black soap so if you are making black soap and um you want to use it you want to use kojic acid then it's best to use kojic acid the palmitate okay gives you more room for you to get yourself you know for it to work and it is very much stable and I like to add kojic acid depalmitate at the oil phase of my formula. In fact, it is one of the beautiful ingredients that I love to add in my body butters and in my emulsion. So if you're making an emulsified product, say your creams, your lotions, you should add your kojic acid at the oil phase. And the beautiful part is it can go through intense heat. This simply means that even if you put it on heat for a long time, it will still be bioavailable. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do well to give it a thumbs up and also share so that they can see this video. And also if you would like to get any of our products, do well to heat the description button and you're going to see that it's a drop down menu when you see that click on the link right there and tell me what you think about this video do not forget to hit the notification bell and also the subscribe button i'll see you guys again very soon